I work on myself every single day. And for me, it's more like, you know, charging our devices. If we don't charge, the batteries die. But we take ourselves so much for granted. And at one point, even I did. So uh, I charge myself every single day because I want to show up as my best self. Uh, and I want to be the better version of myself than I was yesterday. So I'm working on myself every single day. And when I show up like this, I attract the best people and situations and it works in my favor. Hi, and welcome to Indian Explorers. In this podcast, we talk about Indian success stories. I am Sabrina, and together with my co-host, Amit, we will get to understand the journey of our guests and what drives them. The optimism, patience, idealism, and courage, these are their attributes which we hope to bring to life in our conversations with them. So if you enjoy the show, please hit the subscribe button and share it with others. Hi, how's it going today? Doing well. How are you, Sabrina? Doing well. Doing well. Good. What, good what's good. on the agenda? Uh, before we talk, uh, talk about our guest today, did you? Are you watching the NBA finals between I Boston am. and? I am. You know, Palace? Noel, my husband, grew up in that area, so he's a diehard Celtics fan. Oh, he is. Well, yep. I think that now they're two nil up, and I think they're favorites to win. I wanted to. Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about one of the one of the Celtics players, uh, Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. What do you know about this dude? I know he's a class act and very, very, very smart guy. Yeah. Top of his class in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Played in uh, Cal's chess team. He was offered an internship by NASA. Yeah. Apparently also he he didn't have an agent when he got drafted. Yeah. And teams were so scared that he was so smart that he may not stick to basketball. You know, he may want to yeah. leave and pursue other careers. Like you said, you know, maybe he wants to take that internship at NASA, but he's a class act. I guess but the amount of money you get if you're a top player in the NBA, I mean, no job's going to give you that kind of money, right? Yeah. But maybe that's not what drives him. Maybe that drives you and not him. All right. Fair enough. I don't know what he gets paid, but I'm sure it's in the millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> he was also he was also the youngest person ever to lecture at Harvard, right? Really? That I did not know. Yeah. Yeah. He also took a master's class in his first semester at Berkeley. Berkeley? Okay. Berkeley. How do you pronounce Berkeley, it? Berkeley. Berkeley. UC yeah. Berkeley. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's also teamed up with MIT and he started his own foundation called uh, Juice. But instead of J, it's number seven. Mm-hmm. So juice number seven, okay. and basically it's to tackle income inequality and you know education, education. for you know those you know, who he, don't have. In that sense, he reminds me a lot of um, David Robinson. Oh yeah, the Spurs I guy for the Spurs. Yeah, and you know, living here in San Antonio, he he started schools here, does a yeah. lot for education in the community. So so does uh, so does LeBron, right? Yeah, LeBron does the same thing. I guess they've got I love the money. it. They, they have the, the money. Why not? You know, yeah. like total yeah. opposite of our your favorite family, the Ambani's. No, but you don't hear this about soccer players, right? As much? No, you don't. No. And maybe I'm here in the US, so we're not yeah. talking about international soccer players. Like, have you heard of like Mbappe or Ronaldo, any of them doing a lot of charity work? I know Ronaldo owns hotels <laughs> for profit. I uh-huh. believe in Madeira, where he's from, he has funded one school. Oh, just one. <laughs> yeah, I believe. I believe. You gotta start How generous somewhere. of him. You gotta start somewhere, Sabrina. You know what? <laughs> I don't know enough to diss or Ronaldo yeah, or any yeah, soccer yeah, player. Exactly. Yeah. And I definitely don't know enough about the Ambani family, but I'm pretty sure they're helping millions of people. And maybe maybe they're doing it in, in the quiet manner they're just not talking about it maybe 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 yeah, yeah. anyway let's, <laughs> let's jump into our guest today sabrina let's do it all right 
Today we have a, a power couple, Mansi and Vinav, co-founders of Reverge, a one-stop solution for individuals, celebrities, and influencers to launch their direct-to-consumer brands. In fact, they are building the world's fastest brand creation engine through Reverge. They are also the founders of Noor Cosmetics in India and have multiple brands in development in the U.S. Today, we will learn how they met, how they complement each other, and why they are living their best life together. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You know, where do you want to start, guys? I, I want to start from your backgrounds, you know, how you guys met, and maybe why don't each of you tell us where you were born, you know, a little bit about your childhood. Sure. So as you know, Amit already, I'm born in Bombay, just like your wife <laughs> and uh, always been a Bombay girl. Never thought I'd ever leave Bombay. That's what happens when you're born in Bombay, right? Uh, yeah. And um, I started working when I was 16 and um, a lot of uh, amazing things happened work-wise through my journey and I think half my life I work now that's so funny I was just telling a friend a few days back that you know half my life I've worked and um, all exciting things a lot of learnings uh, amazing experiences and um, then I met him and <laughs> things changed okay. uh, Vinav, you know, why we... don't you tell us your background before you tell us the story and how you guys met yeah so uh, like uh, like every Indian uh, household journey, mine is very, very similar. Like uh, I was born in Udaipur, Rajasthan. Uh, it's a beautiful city of lakes, uh, known for its wedding, known for its palaces. But yeah, for us, it was very normal. Like we were seeing these palaces every day. I was like, okay, it's a very boring city now. So I moved to Bombay when I was uh, 26 and 2016. Uh, and that's when, uh, and like in, in, in my childhood, like, you know, it was more of like becoming an engineer that, that's what happens in every Indian uh, household. I think like become an engineer, lawyer, uh, or go for medical things like that. Like, so it's very, very normal. Uh, until I realized like what I was going for, uh, in my engineering doesn't work for me. Right. You know, so I like quickly jumped on to building what I love the most and uh, we'll talk about it, uh, further. But yeah, I moved to Bombay, uh, to build my life, uh, Beyond what's happening in Udaipur and, you know, explore the world. And it has been beautiful, uh, taking that leap, you know, that you can go beyond and fly on your own. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's where you guys met in Bombay? Yes. That's yes. Where met in Bombay. Okay. How, how did you guys meet? We generally tell people you need a drink to hear our story. <laughs> <laughs> but I will just imagine we all have drinks in hands. Um, we, it was a work meeting. So we met for work. And um, I don't remember meeting him. So let's say, Sabrina, uh, you know, I've come to meet you and you have Amit and two more people, two more friends with you. I remember the other two. I don't remember the third one, which is him. And oh, he made an impact, I remember huh? the meeting. <laughs> what an impact. <laughs> Enough, you're a really impactful yeah, guy. Really, huh? really bad. <laughs> so I look at this in a way where I know that we both were not ready for each other. Yeah. So that's why I don't remember the meeting. Like easiest answer <laughs> and the way of getting away. Uh, of course, he remembers and he'd added me on Facebook, but we didn't speak for two years. So two years of no conversations, uh, except him wishing me on my birthdays uh, on Facebook. And I thought, okay, he's a Facebook friend. Like I didn't even think about it. Like I didn't know, uh, you know, we've ever met. Cut to then 2019. Um, uh, as you know, you know, I'm also a manifestation coach. So I write... Um, about my morning thoughts. It could be about affirmations, mental health, manifestation, law of attraction, power of subconscious mind. So I write these thoughts in the morning and every day for like straight one month, I noticed him reading these posts and liking them. And I was like, okay, you know, there's this Facebook friend who's reading my post every single day. And, um, you know, now he's familiar, like I can talk to him. Uh, so he'd gone to this nice place and uh, I was like, okay, you know, it's okay, I can ask him where it is because he's been uh, reading my post. And then he told me that this is this place in Bandra. And uh, coincidentally, the same week, he had uh, been looking for somebody who can help him on the project that he was consulting uh, from, uh, you know, Singapore based um, individual who had gone to gone through like a lot of mental health, uh, personal journey himself. And he wanted Vinav to help him with this amazing global campaign that they were working uh, on 
and uh, he said you know this is my background and um, i am working on something really exciting i think we should meet and talk about this if you're available this week or next week i'm like yeah sure you know sounds good let's meet and talk within initial 30 minutes of the meeting i said listen my hands are full because i went with an approach that it could be like a campaign uh, which i'd be more than happy to you know uh, hear from him but it seemed like a long commitment and my hands were full like you know i already had uh, <laughs> commitments uh, with work and this was like a full time project so i said that was intentional on his part i'm sure <laughs> of the long term commitment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a no for the work long term commitment back then. But we talked for we spoke for 9 long hours. So we kept talking about life. Uh, there was no flirting, no attraction, no butterflies, nothing of that sort. And for the first time in my life, I sat down with somebody I just met for 9 long hours. So I was like, okay, good conversation, you know. We had fun. We got to know each other so well. uh said our goodbyes didn't know that we'll ever talk because we were not working together we were not friends from before but yeah we had good conversations now next day is sunday and sunday is generally my me time day meaning i will read a book dance meditate not do anything just have fun and that's when he's popping up in my head every 30 minutes and i have promised to listen to my inner voice which i call my inner gps and just the way we follow google maps i follow it wherever it goes wherever it takes me and i sat down uh, to listen to this inner voice and it tells me uh, by afternoon that he's the one and in all my relationship history i have never approached a man in relationship and that's not my personality but that's where i realized that you know how can i do this like how can i know that he's the one and i've we've just met and i still don't know so much about him but i decided to write everything down all my thoughts all my feelings and uh, now i have the summary of this long note this voice gets louder and tells me to send this note to him and i'm like what i can't do this because it's like you know uh, it's it's too clear it has so much clarity and the whole summary of this message is i know you're the one if you're on the same page we can meet and talk and take life one day at a time Now, how can you send something like this to somebody you've just met? You Did can't. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, oh, by evening, I gave up with this <laughs> voice inside my head, and uh, I'm like, okay. Is that what the note said? Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. a long the note, the but note. the summary <laughs> is: I know you're the one. Let's meet and talk about it, and take life one day at a time. So, no, let's go. And out you have for no drinks. idea how he feels. Like what? He's no thinking. idea. No. no idea. I know about myself. I don't know about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me let me interject over here. First of all, do you still have the note? Oh yes, I do. Okay, so that yeah. goes in the show notes. Okay, that, that's awesome. I'm going to share it with the world. <laughs> Secondly, sure. I want to go through. I want to go through Venav's thoughts. Venav is sitting down on a table. If a man spends nine hours talking to a woman <laughs> yeah. that he's just met, he's interested in more than just a business relationship. Right. So I, not, I, I knew what was your intention? That. What was your intention when you came in, and what was your intention in hour five and hour nine? I'd like to know. Honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very honest. Like so, uh, it, definitely, it was only for the work meeting, right? Because that's how we got into, uh, you know, meeting each other. Like because the project that came in was something that I was struggling with in terms of how who is. Who understands this space and want to do content? I can understand tech, product, marketing, but not the content part of doing something about mental health. Right? You know, I'm not sure. someone who has done it. It, right? it took her 24 hours to realize that you're the one. How long yeah. did it take you? Or did you never realize and she just grinded no. it in you? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I had uh, so like during that nine hours, I just knew it was a very comfortable uh, and very, very amazing conversation that we were both having. but it was not you know that hey i like you like it did not happen like you know it was more of like somebody with the same wavelength uh, and understanding about life and that's why the conversation kept going on and on very fun time and in between something funny happened like which was very shocking so you know we met at starbucks where that's where the meeting started like the work meeting in and Andrew. i asked her in uh, no no in, in andheri in, in andheri andheri okay right? yeah and i asked her like 
we are we are meeting Starbucks. Do you want coffee? Do you want tea? One actually, like, no, I don't drink tea. I don't drink coffee. I don't do this. I don't do that. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what? Like, what? What do you drink? Like, there is there must be something that you drink, right? So like, no, only water and alcohol, nothing in between. <laughs> <laughs> I was just pulling his leg. <laughs> So I was like, okay, we we met at the wrong place. I'll finish my coffee. Let's jump to the next place. Like you know, anyway, we are not talking work anymore. So <laughs> let's just go from here. Like, so it was more of like very very fun, comfortable co- conversation between both of us. Moved to the next place uh, where we started uh, having more, uh, you know, conversation about life, but no attraction in that sense. Like you know, hey, she's somebody. Like I love like what she's talking. I like her, and all of that was not happening. But the next day, when I wake up, is when it hits, hits my mind. Like you know, oh. I just met someone who had so much energy, who understands life so much similar to how I understand my life. And my journey has been like very, very intense, the way it was for her, <clears throat> and very honest. Like you know, we didn't hide probably anything with each other. Like in terms of how we grew, where we come from. And things like that, you know. So I was like, yeah. "Yeah, this was really something." Like, you know, but how can I approach the way you just had a thought? Like, you know, was it like something that I planned <laughs> that you know, hey, let's meet for work, and then I'll ask her out? So I was like, shutting my mind off, like, you know, just forget about it. Like, I don't want to take this forward. Like, I will not even message her again. Like that, hey, I want to meet you again. Like, you know, I just shut my mind off and put it away. And I was out shopping. Like, you know, this was. In the afternoon, when she actually messaged around in the evening, not in the afternoon around four four thirty, that's when I was shopping. And it's Sunday. I was out buying new clothes, and in the shopping mall, I get this message from her, like you know, "Hey, you're with the, the one <laughs> with the note." And okay, I the like, note was sent by a text. Yeah, Facebook yeah. message. Okay. It was no. a message, WhatsApp message. Yeah, what's a message? So she wrote and she sent it to me, like you know, I'm like, okay, this really got real, like what I was thinking, what I was feeling. And somebody, you know, uh, who I met yesterday has, you know, already penned on everything that I would have, you know, uh, tried and written about, but I was, I wouldn't have been so clear the way she was. So it gets even more clear for me. I took like half an hour, uh, processed it myself, like, you know, what she wrote. Like, I need someone who is so clear in her life. Like, you know, this ambition and go getter is one thing, but somebody so clear that you're the one, nobody can say it, like, you know. So what, what and this, I was just thinking, you read the you read the WhatsApp, so it shows red, and it took yeah. you thirty oh, minutes. Oh, I was she away. I I kept my phone away. I went on airplane mode. Oh, I have I nothing like, to do. <laughs> I'm nerve wracking. <laughs> but I read it, and I was like, okay, I have to process it. The thoughts are very very similar, uh, and whatever I was looking for just happened. Like you know, the person I was looking for is right there, and. And usually you don't find people like her. Like you know, it's very very difficult to get someone who is so clear in her life. Like, like I want to do That's this. That's fantastic. And and the story, like, yeah, she's she's a queen. She's yeah, not she a princess. Is. She's a queen. <laughs> she's she knows queen. what she wants. <laughs> I, I want to know. Great. I want to know what your parents thought when you. Oh, how they long were did so it take happy. you to tell your parents? A what week. Was, a week. A later. week. Yeah, and never in my life I've shared my relationships early on. Like you know, I yeah. want to be so sure. So never involved them, but this felt so right, and this felt so clear. Like we were not even thinking about. Like the next day we met, it was just like you know, you know, this is it. There were no more questions. There's no more like let's get to know each other because we had taken the decision, and now we have to, you know, just take it one day at a time for lifetime, which we both signed up for. So uh, it was my dad's birthday, and I was like, you know, I will tell my dad uh, and my mom and my sister, and um, join us for dinner. So we all went together for dinner. When I told them, they were so excited to see him because they're like, you just met, and you're sharing this with us, which means it's a serious business. <laughs> you know, you're signing up for this. Um, they loved him in the first. You know, it was literally love at first sight uh, when they met, and. Uh, they were like, okay, you know, we we don't have any questions, we don't have any problems. Like, uh, go That's ahead. Great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then he went to see his parents, and within next one week, and um, then they're like, oh wow, you know, we are really excited to see her. So while he was there, they asked us to like fly down. So we went there. 
so that we can all meet we met and they were again more excited super excited so yeah i think this is the best thing that ever happened to them and us <laughs> so and 5 years later you're in la oh yeah in LA. la yes yes how long have you lived in la it's been 3 mo- it's going to be 3, three months, months now, now. Yeah. Oh wow! Very yeah. new. Very new. Yes. Very new. I, I'm changing the name of the podcast. I'm changing it to Indian Explorers Love Stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's get it's getting even more crazier. So it gets like super crazy. Uh, after we, you know, sign up for this, we're like, okay, you know, let's get married. We met in August. Uh, in January, got married, which is again like quick because when you know, you know, right? Like we didn't want like more time and like. you know just wait it out and we got lucky so we had 2000 people attend our wedding and when i got to know the number before we got married i was like what 2000 people are you crazy <laughs> but uh, yeah then yeah yes yes so four day festival uh, had so much fun went for a month long trip uh, and when we got back was the first day of um, you know first case of covid in bombay COVID. so the other news was out that you know soon there's going to be lockdown so extended honeymoon and i was like okay we have more time together now and that's when i had this aha moment that listen everything that i wrote in my manifestation journal is you and he's like listen i know you manifest and all but this is crazy you know it can't be uh you can't manifest something so specific i'm like yes i know but i did <laughs> and um, look for all my old journals call my mom to send you know my stuff from home and we sat down together the entire day found that page where i wrote everything that i wanted in my partner which is uh you know our age difference two years up or down he's two years up aries but calm aries because aries are generally not calm at one point even i was not uh worked a lot in last 11 years and reached a point but he's like calmer than me of uh, everything like so many things like you know so funny like somebody who doesn't smoke and um you know that also like check 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 every single thing that i wrote and i was so specific i got like into specific details and it's like i manifested him top to bottom inside out <laughs> you know i had I know you do a lot of um coaching with manifestation and yes. yesterday I went back and looked. I had written a blog for um parenting and about vision boards for children. And I forgot I even wrote this, but you know, it's called value tagging where you're the more you manifest and think about certain things you want in your life, your brain starts to just focus on those things. Yes. And they also call it the Tetris. Remember the game Tetris? Yes. Yes. So they call it the Tetris effect too where all those pieces you're so focused on it that it starts to all align together. Align together. Yeah. And so that's, that's exactly what you did, you know, personally with your relationship and I'm sure we'll get to the professional part too. Yeah, 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 everything. This conversation is uh, way above me. I'm going to keep quiet and let Sabrina carry on. <laughs> 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 you're learning. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. so funny. I tell everybody that you're manifesting every, every single day. moment, every single it's day, so regardless of whether you believe in it or not, because it's like law of gravity. You know, if I drop something, it's going to drop off. There's no doubt about it. But because right. we have so many limiting beliefs, we have, you know, we we learn from people that life is supposed to be in a certain way. uh but no it's supposed to be the way you want and you can get whatever you want but it has to come from your heart and that's like so the you don't be- part so you don't believe in luck like that meeting where venaf was there and he was the third wheel in the meeting and you yes. ignored him and you didn't realize he was there that's just it wasn't luck that he was there so for me luck is universe supporting you giving you like you know some uh, brownie points that's what luck for me is um yeah love from the universe that's what i call luck and i call myself very lucky i'm super blessed i'm super grateful uh and things definitely are designed for reasons and as i told you we were not ready for each other which is why i don't remember the meeting like i don't remember the meeting you know and i'm so good with remembering each conversation uh, that i have with anybody i meet professionally and personally i remember people at least i remember faces if not the name but i didn't yeah. remember him at all Yeah, but so you okay. So luck is the universe gifting you brownie points. I got it. Yes, but uh, you don't think it's your positive attitude that's resulting of, in all of this? Because a hundred percent. 
yes yes 100% That's part of and it. i have worked on it like last 11 years every single day no matter in which part of the world or what mood i am in or you know what time i slept i stick to my morning routine my rituals my night routine and it's not negotiable no matter what happens around me so uh, i work on myself every single day and for me it's more like you know charging our devices if we don't charge the batteries die but we take ourselves so much for granted and at one point even i did so uh, i charge myself every single day because i want to show up as my best self uh, and i want to be the better version of myself than i was yesterday so i'm working on myself every single day and when i show up like this i attract the best people and situations and it works in my favor okay vinav what is yeah. mansi's night routine and what don't you like about it yeah so it's uh, it's something very very uh, unique and amazing uh, so she would uh, obviously like do her very quick meditation but the best part is like she would come and tell me every single day before going to bed and even if she is like out partying and coming we come back at 3 in the, uh, in the morning she would come back and the first thing she would say is i love you i thank you for this i thank you for that I, and she has a list of things in her mind that she would thank me for every single day and that's how i started learning about all these things and I, and now i reciprocate obviously initially it was difficult to understand why i say thank you every day to each other like you know but that's what you know makes us super strong uh, with each other because we are actually you know going back in what we did throughout the day and what are we thankful for to each other and obviously what 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 we are thankful to happening to us, to, ha- to things happening to us but that brings us more closer like you know because you are realizing that she did this for me and i did this for her or if, if it's nothing then also like let's say if i just drove long hours today to you know go for meetings she would still make sure that thank you for driving 2 hours mm-hmm. and take us to the meeting right you know because every small step is a note as a gratitude and thankfulness you know coming in and you know that's what she does like every single day sometimes i would say thank you for everything and you know move on but she would not miss it like <laughs> like you know <laughs> so you guys work together now yeah. right yes. you have reverge how do you how tell tell us how that came about first sure so when we got married um you know i was doing my thing he was doing his so uh, you know i had two companies then the brides of india india's leading wedding media platform and daily dose network because i had to start another company for all the work which was revolving around non wedding uh, industry right because brides of india was all about weddings so daily dose network was all about um, working with movie production houses for helping them with marketing strategy promotional campaigns helping brands with content strategy marketing strategy uh i was doing that and he was building his amazing uh, businesses back then and do you want to add to that yeah like so uh Re- reverge happened uh, because of very very uh yeah insane uh, you know conversation i was having so i had built a tech company from my college days but 6 years into it i got like we were like 350 plus clients and all of that i was like really really <clears throat> and like bored of it to be honest like you know like it's it's same thing like you have 60 people working for you 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 want to go beyond like you know and this was all happening in my hometown so there was no exposure in terms of beyond my customers i was meeting from global out uh footprints but i had no other mentor advisor or things like that so i was like i want to you know break free break, build something beyond and that's when i built a company got selected for an acceleration program here in silicon valley and that's when the mind opened up like you know hey there is a world beyond like where you can raise venture capital you can do a lot of other things then building this company you know ground up the way i did for last 6 years like you know so I built a product company uh, raised some capital you know for the first time in my life i got uh, a vc money coming in and a very big check which took me 4 years to make as revenue myself comes in on day one of you know building the business like you know so a very different journey i was on and uh, we were trying to scale that company for 2 years didn't do really well that's when i was in bombay uh, figuring my next step but i was like this 0 to 1 is very very difficult i don't want to do it now right but i met a guy from a very big uh, 
company and I was talking to him about procurement. So my previous background was very, very, you know, focused on helping manufacturing units do data analysis, business intelligence, forecasting and things like that. So we were building ERP even solutions for them. Uh, and that's when I was like just talking to them and I had built a global network of uh, friends who are into manufacturing or into supply or into sourceful okay. uh, resourcing and all of that, right? And he says like, hey, like MOQs with even companies like us, we are doing billion dollars and above in revenue. is very, very difficult. Like because factories know we, we are really big. So they would come up and say for new NPDs, like in new product developments, it's 300,000 pieces, it's 500,000 mm. pieces for every category that they want to build, right? Like, okay, I have friends in China. I can do something about it. So, okay. and I got the first uh, consulting project like that. You know, it was a big check uh, coming in because I went to a friend in China who was my childhood friend and I told him, go to this factory I know about. Just don't say who we are working for or who we are. Just say, I want to build this new product. What would be the MOQ? And in 15 minutes, he calls me back. Well, now they just agreed on 100,000 pieces. It's not 500,000 anymore. So I'm like, okay, we'll go back and say $1 on each piece is ours. And we'll give it 100,000. Get you 100,000 pieces for this new product development. And we got a like, really, really big client. And that's when I wrote the idea of Reverge. Like, you know, if people like, like really big brands like Miniso and things like that are facing challenges, what's going to happen with you and me? Right? We can't even build a good product company this is a challenge like how will i bring in like two hundred thousand dollars just to build a company right uh i don't even know if it's gonna work or not so consumer product good goods is a difficult space to build out like a lot of white labeling happens obviously like you can buy 10 pieces put your own logo in but you can't build a new product company yourself uh very easy yeah, so i wrote right. this idea in 2018 that i want to build a platform to help people do this but I wrote it and kept it aside. And I wrote the name Reverge just out of nowhere. Like it had no meaning back then. It was just You were just manifesting a very... without knowing you were manifesting. Without knowing. Yeah. So very yeah. cool word. I wrote it like Reverge is the business idea. And I'll someday I'll pick it up and build it. Right. And uh, when we uh, got married and all of that, like, so we were building our own thing separately. So I told her like one day when you want to work together, I think this is the idea that we should pick up and start working on. Right. So yeah, that's how it was happened. Yeah. So you both are so grateful to each other at the end of the day, and now you're working together professionally. Yes. Are there? Tell us. Tell us about those moments where you're just like, who says sorry first when you fight? <laughs> yes. What Sabrina is asking. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. To be honest, to be honest, <laughs> it's it's really funny, or people don't believe when we say yeah. this. Even <laughs> in fact, even my parents and his parents, they don't mm -hmm. believe when we say yeah. this. But we don't fight, and that's because we take life one day at a time. So we communicate you, every, <laughs> yeah, we communicate every single thing, uh, no matter how difficult it gets. Like you know, you you don't want to. Um, a lot of times initially, you know, you want to have certain things to yourself, but within a few weeks only, I started doing it. I'm like, this is what I feel and this is what it is. And then he started opening up as well. And we decided we stick to this. We, we stick to being best friends first, uh, because that's going to be base of our relationship. We are really romantic, but romance can like, you know, keep fading away. You know, not every single day you want to be romantic. Um, and there can be weeks which will pass where, you know, life will have its own things and we may not want to uh just be uh you know like being in a certain way but when you are friends you can really show up the way you want you can be honest about it you don't have to pretend anything there are no filters if let's say when we were not working together if there was anything bothering us we would share openly without really either shutting down or venting out something else some other frustration on each other so I knew I, what I was getting into so because I'd done the work on myself and even he without you know knowing he's been like this person who is an amazing partner and a friend so we communicate a lot that really helps so when he shared this idea of building reverse together I was like I had reached a point when I was anyway ready to pause for a while you know when you worked with some of the most amazing brands uh you know you've done amazing work i have a story bank of three thousand people so you know i've made like amazing connections uh and 
the point had reached where you know something beyond what i have been building and i don't know what that is today but his idea really gave me that spark and i said i have amazing creator celebrity network so why don't we merge both the concepts like your idea and my network together and build brands only for creators and celebrities with them so you know meaning we co on these brands so that really um changed everything shifted everything and you know he was always there when i started first working on reverge you know building the whole network started speaking to people then we were uh, building team and uh, we have our departments but we share responsibilities uh, you know we try and not get into each other's ways because mm-hmm. we have different strengths that really helps a lot uh, you know working as a couple together because uh, a lot of times life gets like you know when you're working together and building it together you don't get time so in between whenever we have time we just like you know continue being at the place where we went for meeting and then we'll call it a date for example even if it means <laughs> we having yeah. like 30 minutes yeah. together right but we are all the time together so uh we try and go on uh, you know spend time in nature on weekends so that we are together like as couple and not just as co-founders yeah. so uh small small things uh, you know but this friendship then balancing like our personal life and professional life because it, there is a fine line and you know you can't really help uh, stop yourself from talking about work because you're building something which is like you know growing a company together so even if uh, you really don't want to talk about work you can't help yourself so a lot of times you know we we end up talking about work we've just identified like a few boundaries that let's not talk about work after like you know after dinner for example like no matter what because then your brain starts being so active so that's where we reach that point at least but other things we are okay with so you know as long as I'm- you Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say I'm laughing a little because my husband and I work together as well. Awesome. Okay. We have for many years, but we argue. And yeah. <laughs> but right. the way I deal with it is I will I mean, he just pretends it didn't happen, right? Or he just let, not pretends. He lets it go, and I just we get home and I'm quiet and I don't want to yeah. talk. But then in the morning after being married over 20 years you wake up in the morning and you're just like whatever let it go you know let it go <laughs> right but right. he brings he brings things up later at night like you said you guys don't talk about work after dinner and right. that's when i'm shutting down so i give him that look like yeah we're not talking <laughs> Stop about it, this yeah. now <laughs> yeah i'm not talking about this now <laughs> yeah so i wanted to ask you you're you know you have this huge network of people that you've built um which is really a key for your business is most of your network in India or in the US or a mix now so until last year it was only india and uh-huh. then before getting here we started speaking to a lot of people you know zoom calls and then started building our network here and now we do have great network here excellent great. network yeah. super grateful and um, yeah like we've um, reach i think in 6 months we've done the kind of work that maybe generally people would do in like 2 3 years fantastic yeah. so sabrina's asking obviously for engine explorers podcast right to grow of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh we have list of people list don't of worry <laughs> <laughs> great so um i uh you know i feel like this has gone into like a a counseling life coach manifestation like we've gone in all sorts of directions um do you guys have children uh you, Not are yet. you manifest are you planning to have children yes. of course someday okay no because yeah. then once i think you'll become more of a normal couple once you have children <laughs> you mean they'll argue when the kid arrives <laughs> yeah i know i just think it's normal i'm sure like, i'm manifesting kids to be calm i'm manifesting <laughs> us to be good parents calm parents and i am manifesting to enjoy life and build our companies together even with kids because uh, yeah. and i know i can do it i can already visualize it and i know how many kids we want and how many kids we have like i've already uh, given names to my kids also <laughs> So it's okay, happening. Okay. Yeah. So how many hours okay, how many hours do you sleep each a night? 7-8 hours. 7-8 hours. 7-8 yeah. hours. Yeah. Okay. That that becomes 0.7 and 0.8 hours when you have your first baby. <laughs> and then when you don't have sleep, 
your <laughs> your incredible aptitude and your incredible you know persona uh you know when you <laughs> when you're breastfeeding and you know right. and it hurts uh yes. you know to to be able to to remain cool and composed in those times but they is have very set the difficult. foundation now they've set we the have and also i manifested uh, like i helped my client manifest for me it was a test because i wanted to like you know because it's parenthood sounded so scary initially when we got married like you know some people some wrong people who were around us <laughs> that's like cut 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 my cords i don't want to see you know things which are uh, making it look scarier then we started seeing amazing parents and amazing kids like around us like you know in fact our friends also and this one client i helped her because she didn't want to have kids and she's like i really want but i can't because you know we both work and it's going to be crazy and she lives in australia so uh you know we worked on um, uh, the whole journey together and on mother's day i told her to get like super clear on how you want your baby to be like and she wrote everything she visual- visualized we worked on this journey for a few months together now she has uh, this kid who doesn't cry through tantrums who's like literally <laughs> sleeping when they sleep get up only once for like you know uh, you know food or like uh, washroom or whatever uh, but she's so calm and when we are doing like video calls now because she's such a good friend also uh she's like sitting there like you know the max she'll do is she's trying to like you know just get her airpods and play with it but she wouldn't scream for attention and she is not a tantrum thrower so i know you know you can build your life the way you want like you know the way i manifested now we don't even have kids yet so you know i'm like going to be able to manifest this specific humans in our life uh, for sure but uh, i know there'll definitely be uh, a few things when you are growing and raising to new lives uh, which we are prepared for whenever that happens that's great and um, my wife is going to call you in the next hour <laughs> sure and i'm at you will uh, you know i'm sure we'll be in touch and i will share all the amazing insights and updates from our uh, <laughs> life when we have kids so don't worry <laughs> Nancy, when you're coaching, you know, mm-hmm. there's no timetable necessarily for what you're manifesting. What right. do you tell your clients that say, you know, I, I'm, I'm writing it down, I'm envisioning it, and it's not happening. Like, this isn't going to happen. How Sabrina's do you... asking for a friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> How do you coach them through that? So initially, when they sign up, I have, um, you know, developed this intense deep dive questionnaire where they sit down mm-hmm. with their life understanding what their limiting beliefs are what are they scared of and what do they really want so when we start the journey i ask them what do you exactly want because you know being frustrated happens when you don't believe in your desires or they are not your heart's desires meaning they are your ego's desires right and ego's desires may not happen may happen but go back may happen but it, you wouldn't feel so great like you know for example if you are um, if you really desire a specific car let's say a ferrari uh, and you are like always thinking about it but subconsciously you are you want this car because your childhood friend your social media friend has it and you know you saw it at some point and you're like which is why i want it because that's your ego's desire and you don't intentionally realize that it happened this is not your desire it's because you want to prove it to the world or to that friend or to that specific community that i belong here too and uh, and no jokes like when my clients have manifested previously without you know us working together they have and some i'm talking about some celebrities as well so they've manifested amazing things and they're not happy about it and then they realize because it was not coming from the heart so when it's not your heart's desire it can go back it cannot happen or it can make you feel as if blah like you know i don't feel good about it i was so excited about it before it being in my life but it doesn't make me feel any good now um and it could be big things it could be crazy things like my desire for my professional life like you know i wanted uh my company's logo in a dharma movie uh and i used to visualize with the music in it and i saw daily dose network like my logo in this movie and i was like because I, it was my heart's desire i didn't want to show it to anybody it was not my ego's desire it was my own desire and heart's desires 
and not to be you know small or limited or you can't really manifest big things money wise or like success wise right uh but um, they happen and they make you feel good and without them being in your life you don't feel sad you don't feel low you know you are okay to wait it out because in your mind's eye you are seeing it you're living it and it's there so you don't want its physical evidence to be there uh for you to be happy and good which is why i'm all the time happy and like you know even him so when you if you see our life on social media you will know that it's what it is and i documented because for myself like you know i don't want to scroll through those 70000 pictures that i have in my phone but i can just go on my social media and like you know look back so i believe in living life one day at a time we only have one life and you can have everything you don't have to be frustrated you don't have to worry you don't have to doubt your desires your manifestation is happening every single time and in fact anybody who looks back into their life you will see at least if not more 10 things that you will realize at some point i wanted it and i got it so the how is not in our control the when is also not in our control right, but right. the what is definitely in our power we co create our life every single day i love your delivery day. of this and it's so genuine <laughs> I, i thank you i want to know the celebrities she's coached <laughs> i want to know the celebrities before and after she coached them <laughs> oh my okay. god yeah it's it's insane <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we won't, we, we won't put you on the spot asking for names. Don't worry. Vinav, we'll what off, are you? We'll do that off the record, off the. Podcast. What are you manifesting for Reverge? What's next? What's coming? Yeah, so uh, you know, like uh, for for sure, like you know, when we started building out, like it, it and it's been there in my mind. Uh, you know, I've been I've manifested a lot of things. Uh, uh professionally uh for sure a lot of amazing things have happened like so i manifested manifested google as one of the things that i wanted to work with like mm-hmm. a company that i wanted to work with and it was something that i wanted to look up so i in my college days any engineer would think of going to a fan like a facebook uh, or go to an amazon or go to a google right, right. Uh, to work for uh and i failed in a subject when i was building my that's when i started building my company right and Eventually, I got selected for Google for Entrepreneur's Program in 2016, right? And I didn't know these things are called manifestation. <laughs> like I just knew that I'm working for something and it it, it happens, like you know. And uh, that's when I learned about you know all these things. And for Reverse, it's very very clear, like you know, we want to build some amazing legacy brand. So I believe in building legacy, and that's how I operate. Uh, you know, in my entire personal life as well, like you know, money is. something that will anyway happen like it's a by product it, yeah it just keeps happening like you know even on our worst days something good happens and it comes back you know like right. i've i've gone to zero as well in my accounts and the same day i made money like you know so that i've learned like by all the ups and downs in my life like you know money is not going anywhere it's it's an energy it's coming back to us like you know if we do the right thing so for legacy like river is something that i want to build as a legacy that's my manifestation like we the companies that we build out of reverse should be household names people should know about it like it's a billion dollar company or it's a 100 million company doesn't matter but it has to be an household name people should know about whatever goes out from reverse like you know and even the first brand that is coming out we never thought like you know celebrities would order from our website like you know obviously is, we're working what is that first here. brand it's called noor cosmetics uh that's right okay yeah so it's in india and obviously we knew that the creator network helps but you know having a celebrity placing an order is something i don't think so anybody has heard of like never they want like you to send they would call a message yeah hey we love your product and it uh, comes for free they want you to send them the free yeah. but in our product, case it never happened but they actually went on and ordered ordered yes very not cool. just one like couple of them so and- many times yeah <laughs> and we see the addresses and we see the names and we are like Are you sure? <laughs> But it happens it's like happened. all the time, it's like exciting. so many times. Yeah, that's exciting. Our, the legacy, uh, you know, something that can go out and you know be like, hey, we built it, you know. Yeah, so right. lots of cool brands uh, in the US and globally is what we are manifesting for Reverge. As is a venture studio now, so you know we are building these amazing brands, uh, scaling them, uh, and um, yeah, sky is the limit for Reverge and us. Yes. Is one, of, is one of the addresses Mrs. Ambani Antilia House? Uh huh. Ultimate <laughs> Road, Mumbai. 
<laughs> we, that's the, the, the ultimate manifestation is they should buy all our brands. They <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <laughs> like, literally take over. <laughs> so, uh, what what what's your definition of success, guys? Like each one, like what for you is success today, and has that evolved over time? Sure, for me is uh, you know end of the day. So for me, success has to be every single day. It can't just be when I am having how many zeros in my bank account. Uh, but it has to be more to do with did I do my best today? Uh, am I feeling peaceful by the end of the day? And am I feeling uh, you know really fulfilled with my life and with my contribution to this day and life? that's success for me and you know like doing my best being happy with everything and being grateful and having that peace within um yeah that's success for me yeah for me it has changed uh, like you know coming from a very business background my all my thoughts were always like money is success like you know though my parents never taught me that but that's how you learn from environment seeing people around you right and that's how I was approaching everything until 2018. Like, you know, hey, I want to do this so that I can make good money. I want to do this so that I can do this and that. I should I, I should be able to buy a house. I should be able to do this. Mm. And, you know, and when the second company failed, uh, in, in terms of, you know, we had to shut it down because it was not scaling the way it want, that the way we were looking at it. Like, you know, even after raising capital, I realized, like, you know, the happiness was more of when I got selected for Google for Entrepreneurs, then raising capital. Like I was more happy that day because I was getting to fly to Silicon Valley for the first time and that's the dream come true, right? Yeah. So it was in in fact putting more money into something which had which I had no idea w- would turn into something or not. Like, you know, but that day was more happier and probably the most happiest day in the professional journey because you were getting things, you know, that you didn't want. Like, you know, you were not even Yeah. Because you're not looking for it. Like, I, I, it's like, you know, I, I didn't know I could be in Google for Entrepreneurs program until it actually happened. Right. And that's how I started changing my entire perception about success. And obviously, one more thing that was very, very attached to me was like, you know, how my father, I've seen him, you know, go through his entire journey. Uh, so for me, it was like, if, if I can do 10% of it, I'm good. Like, you know, because what he is doing is phenomenal with his family, with, you know, taking care of everybody, making sure everyone gets everything except, and he doesn't buy anything, like, you know. So he was so, he's still so content like, by his life that he could have made like billions and billions of dollars, but he's happy with his 10 crore, like, you know, he's actually living like that, like, you know. But for other people, he has all the money in the world. So if my cousins would come, his cousins would come, or his yeah, family would come, he would throw away all the money he would be with them. Like, he would go to office late, come early, but still make money. Like, so I was like, how is it even happening? Like, do we even, do we even make money or not? Like, he would not give us things. Like, no, you have to achieve it. Like, you know, so I was like always built like that, you know, in my mind, like, you know, if I could do 10% of it, because it's so difficult, like, you know, to manage what he's doing and making that kind of money, I probably cannot. <laughs> right. So. So I started structuring my life in a very different. So it, it has changed over a period of time. Today, it's more of like, we are happy. Like, you know, what we are doing today is yeah. amazing. Even if it doesn't mean we have X amount of money in the account, but we get to live best days, like honestly, every day. Every you know? single day. Yeah. Like, and his dad. With so much money, uh, like coming out of best cars, come and tell us we want your life. Like, oh yeah. Like, okay. All the yeah. time. And All like, the time. So this has changed our definition of successfully. Like, you know, like if they That's want great. our life, you know, you I'm happy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. And you are successful. I mean, the validation that, uh, you know, he subconsciously seeked happened last year in 33 years. He heard, I'm proud of you from his dad for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Sabrina and I are still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get it all the time from my parents. Oh, really? awesome. oh, Me too. Yeah. Me too. I get she it from American parents. Too. Yeah. She, she has parents she that have been brought up in America, so she, they also say, I love you. Unlike us, <laughs> unlike our parents who've never told us that they love us, 
<laughs> she has well, American I say parents. I love you every single day. Yes. And and they my, parents, he, no, no, they do. Me. I think they have learned it from me. Oh, they, they learned it from me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he told me that yeah. I tell my daughter I love her way too much. And I was like, no. Good I morning. I love you. I'm go- going to sleep. I love you. How was your day? I love you. Yes. And, and we grew up with Indian parents. Where yeah. they, I have they Indian never parents said, too. <laughs> no, no, no. But your Indian parents are American. Like our Indian parents are Indian. Indian. They would never say, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're so good. They will say, work hard, brush your teeth, go sleep, do your homework, and, you know, like, leave us alone. That's what Indian <laughs> parents did, right? We did okay. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. But Thank Amit, you, to tell you, uh, I manifested and worked on the relationship with my parents as well. Like, it was so different. It was nothing unlike what it is today. And, like, he, since the time he is together, like, he's seen. But even before that, like, four years before meeting him, I've had this relationship with them. and. It is a dream relationship, honestly, like, you know, uh, and I, I didn't think before that, that it is possible, but I was like, okay, let me work on this. Let me just like, you know, not feel bad about it or feel angry about it or complain about it, even to myself. How can I change it? And I have the most beautiful relationship with my parents, my sister and his parents. Like, you know, we all get along so well. I'm so grateful, but it's work that I was ready to put in and they were ready to also reciprocate. It took a while, but you know, it's like I took nine steps and they took one. And then now we are all taking equal steps to each other. Sure, it's amazing. That's great. But you don't tell your in-laws, I love you. Oh, I do. And his mom <laughs> would blush and she's like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? But she, <laughs> yeah, but, but she hugs me like all the time. Like, you know, when we are together. But she and doesn't say not, I love you. Uh, they don't know yet. How no, to say it. Yeah. no, she doesn't. <laughs> but okay. So they're normal. Yeah. They're normal is what I'm saying. <laughs> they're normal. Yeah, but hugs have started. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Fine. Fine. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's get into the rapid fire. In the rapid fire round, Sabrina and I will ask you questions. We have quite a few rapid fires because I think, we'll, you know, we're looking forward to your answers. Should we if, do uh, your name? How we have? Uh, no, let's hear both their answers. Okay. So okay. we'll do a question and then Mansi will ask, answer first, uh, then Vinav. And then the next question, Vinav will answer first and then Mansi. Okay. Okay. Sabrina will okay. start. Okay. Um, what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done together? together i would say um wow so many things i can one tell, but i cannot Go. share the full story oh yeah oh yeah 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 <laughs> oh yeah i was actually going to say that too <laughs> we're made out in car and we got <laughs> caught by police like <laughs> wait repeat that you what we, got- we were we're kissing in a car <laughs> and they, the police stopped the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it's, ha- it's happened to all of us in india <laughs> And you know what they do, Sabrina? The policeman then gets you out of the car and then says, like, basically, uh, pay me or I'm calling your parents. And they'll tell the girl, the girl, they'll say, give me your father's number. And the girl oh will pay God. anything, yeah. anything not to call the father. What happened to you guys? No, yeah, so, so he we, called me out. Yeah. Like, come out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, he's like, what are you doing here? Like, I told like, I can't explain, you know, right? <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so I hand him some cash in hand <clears throat> and like, okay, go. don't do it here. Go somewhere else and do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, go continue your thing. Can, you can continue, but don't do it here. <laughs> that <is> awesome. That's <laughs> so Brina, it's happened to all of us in India. I can't even tell you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, it Too happened funny. first time for both of us. <laughs> I had to pay money so that yeah. they didn't call, you know, <laughs> pay now <laughs> wives. I was going to say, it better have been your wife. <laughs> it was. It was my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think we'll jump into the next question. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Together or individually? No, each one. Individually. What's your favorite movie? For I'm me, hoping it's, it's not the, the same answer. For me, it's okay. the notebook. Yeah, oh. they're quite a, like, I'm, I'm a movie fan. Like, I, yeah, I used one. to buy, like, so difficult to just say one. But I, I can give the genre. Like I love yeah. uh, sci-fi. I love sci-fi. Like mo- any anything Marvel, anything sci-fi. Yeah. I am up oh, for it. I just saw Dune mm-hmm. two last week. I loved it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Sabrina. Okay, if you could have dinner with any person, dead or alive, who would it be? 
For me, it will be Oprah and Tony. Yeah. Oprah's mine. <laughs> Ro- Tony um, Robbins, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. Not everybody knows Tony, but okay. And uh, yeah. Then- yeah, for me, it's Elon Musk, only to ask him, like, how, how is he building all these companies <laughs> and, and all of them are billion dollar companies and like, and what's the crazy uh, math behind it? Like, you know, something that yeah. I'm intrigued about, you know, how is it happening? Like, it's impossible. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> like crazy all right. mind if, um, if you could instantly master any one skill or superpower, what would it be? For me, swimming and driving. <laughs> <laughs> swimming and driving? <laughs> I'm scared of both of them like I can drive but I can't like I can drive only in the lanes and like the narrow like if nobody's around I can drive like I can't drive it. yeah yeah uh, yeah and water somehow I've reached till here I was so scared so I've gotten rid of my fear of uh, heights and darkness okay. that's gone over the years manifested it visualize it uh, but swimming and driving is you okay. know yet to master and driving in LA is like not Traffic. fun. It's Traffic not fun. and like the speed on like the highway. Yeah. Like, oh God, like, yeah. what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. Uber You'll get it. it. You'll get both. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you? I think Elon's going to give you self driving cars pretty soon. So you'll be okay. Mm. I'm going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, because I am very creative uh, by heart and nature. Like, I want to be an artist, like, <clears throat> who can do like big, big art forms and then it's like, mm. <laughs> that's a skill I want for sure. All yeah. right. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, Picasso. Okay. <laughs> if you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? I think I'm good with LA. Yeah. Yeah, I manifested it. <laughs> so, yes. Awesome. Yeah, for, for me, it's, I, I knew I wanted to come here. So when we met, uh, that was the only condition in our relationship. She was like, okay. I'm never moving out of Bombay. And I was like, okay, I, I dream of building global something, something, but it's okay. I'll stay in Bombay with you. And I never brought it up. And last year she says, like, let's move to US. I'm like, okay. And Maybe it was my know. inner voice, guys. My inner GPS again got crazy. And it's like, you are supposed to be in the US. I'm like, what? Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> yes. You are supposed to be in the US. And then so I shared that with You are in the US because of me. <laughs> yeah. So, His manifestation. So, so true story. Last night. Last night, my wife came back from a walk. She's having a tea. And I tell her, honey, there's a voice inside of me that's saying we should move to Silicon Valley. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, why is that? I said, the greatest country in the world. She goes, India. India. <laughs> I go, no, United States of America. She yeah. goes, America, America. No way, no way. <laughs> Any country but America. There's this fear Indian women have about America. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my inner voice is telling me the same. So maybe I'll be your neighbor soon. We'll see. Very soon. Very okay. Soon. Next question. Uh, to, 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 let me think. Okay. Um, what's next in your bucket list? Bucket list? To travel to two countries for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> without thinking about anything that's in, in our bucket list yeah. um, I'm in Chile you're really... welcome anytime <clears throat> sure yes. <laughs> but London is on the list and um, one he can pick himself like I have yeah. too many <laughs> yeah I didn't think <laughs> travel is good but a skydive is one of one thing oh one yeah skydiving yeah. skydiving yeah. Yes. yeah we're opposites you and me even of <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't skydive if you gave me a million or ten million dollars Let's try. <laughs> Hang with no us. Interest. <laughs> no interest. No interest. Yeah. Sabrina, you want to wrap it up? Okay, last one. What have you bought under a hundred US dollars in the last year that has made the most difference in your everyday life? Oh, less than hundred dollars. I would say we'll the, Indian <laughs> the Indian room. The Indian room. So uh, we went to this Indian Indian grocery store. <laughs> so, uh, you know, because you're not able to clean everything with, you know, what we have here. So we went to this so Indian, Indian grocery Indian store. Room. Yes, it was like 10 or $11. And I was like, this is life changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. The Indian room is a good it one. It is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was taking a well, book, but sure. <laughs> For me, uh, below $100. <laughs> the uh, water filter. 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's not a work. Okay, enough, enough. For you, for you, it's under a thousand dollars. Okay, not thousand. Oh, okay, thousand dollars. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so, yeah. Like so, it, it has made a difference. Like, <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> I love. I I love buying a lot of stuff, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say his wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah, wardrobe is something. Ah, like yeah. So we found <laughs> like some amazing So Which brand this, is he? S- these Sproge specific not. ones that I'm talking about, they are like under 1000 but under 200 in fact and these are like made in India <laughs> somehow we didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see it and then everybody wherever we go they're like, you know, complimenting both of us but more than me him when he wears this jacket and it's so amazing but it has those embroideries. I'll send you the picture. and um people go crazy like random people would stop him and say i love your jacket <laughs> so that's definitely a great yeah. investment which that. which brand is it for now zara it's a designer oh from oh, zara. zara yeah yeah wow. under 200 you can't get designer so i'll yeah. buy things from h&m yeah. and zara and people are like wow this is amazing when i yeah it's from h&m <laughs> maybe it's the way you make it look it's your height oh, yeah. it's your mm-hmm. fit yes mm-hmm. yes yeah. got it Well, uh, guys, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to manifest that you guys are going to be on the Nasdaq and Bombay Stock Exchange in a Thank few years' you. time with Reverge. I think it's going to do super well, and uh, I'm going to hopefully get to know you guys in person pretty soon. And yes. it's been a pleasure to get to know you. And just thank you very much for your, you know, for your story. Thank, thank you so you. much. I am so glad Rajesh sir, uh, you know, introduced us and made this happen because um, we trust him with whatever he says. And when he said that uh, we should, you know, both connect, and we were like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so um, thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Amit. Um, thank you. It was lovely. Both. It's been so nice chatting with you. You guys are ab- an absolutely beautiful couple. Thank and- you. Yeah, I'm so happy you manifested it because you guys belong together. I'm going to go shopping with you. Vinova. I'm going to go yes. clothes shopping with Vinova. I need that. Let's do it. No one's complimented <laughs> he, me he for what I've worn in my life. Like he would no. style me too. <laughs> Ever. No. No. <laughs> But the I can't only wait to see who can Oh, go only, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, the only wife who can say that my husband styles me because always the other way around. No matter yes, in India, true. US or wherever you go, like you you want your wife to help you and pack for you and like do things for you and style you. he styles me all the time and i'm like okay i'm already beautiful and you <laughs> you make things easy you make life easy for me yeah good eye yes good eye great <laughs> well thank you you guys are an amazing powerful couple and i can't wait to see what you guys continue to do and read about it so everyone this has been another episode of indian explorers we hope you enjoyed it just as much as we did have a great day everyone bye oh.